Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita and I have a Kringle candle for you today. And many of you will think it is not seasonal because it's technically a Christmas candle. The candle in question is this one right here, Christmas, uh, don't mind that. <laughs> this was from me burning it. I was, I was lighting it and it, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have taken that off. Really not indicative, obviously, of the way that the candle burned, which was, for the most part, flawlessly. Um, Christmas coal from Kringle. Look at that label, isn't the label nice? Yeah. Now, I told you that I was gonna be burning this for like Valentine's Day for many reasons, but one of them is like the label actually does feel really good for Valentine's Day. That beautiful like rose red color with the black and the white, it just pops. And at first, and especially from afar, you can't really tell what exactly the black is until you kind of like see the name and everything. Um, but this is definitely one of those alternative Christmas candles that you could easily burn even with the label out in January and February, and I would really highly recommend this for pre-Valentine's Day for many reasons. Okay, so look, this is a sexy candle. It's a sexy, sexy candle. So the notes on this one are, top notes, bergamot, mandarin, and green, which is just, just a generic um, adjective there, green. Um, so bergamot and mandarin, like you can tell we're kind of going into that like perfume sphere, um, cologne sphere, and you are not incorrect. This is definitely a very mature kind of perfume smell. Mid notes, spicy, again, generic. Now listen, jasmine and rose. And then your base notes are patchouli, musky, and oriental. A lot of adjectives there, a lot of generic adjectives. Um, so a little bit of a janky list, but I want to indicate you've got the bergamot and you've got the patchouli and the musk. So automatically you should be thinking this is like a perfume, probably a cologne given the patchouli, unless it's a white patchouli. And in this case, I think it's like, a, it's a darker, lower range patchouli. Um, it's got some spice notes, um, but here's the twist. The jasmine and the rose are the twist. Now, if it had just been jasmine, um, Kringle has been using, or at least did a couple years ago. They used jasmine in a lot of their Christmas scents. So the jasmine, well, okay, okay. But then when they added the rose, you see, the jasmine and the rose will take it to a much more intriguing place. So it's not just gonna be like a straight up men's cologne, although it will have kind of a heavier, more mature perfume profile. And that is exactly what it is. I I bought this in a daylight originally, like a couple years ago, and I was kind of obsessed. <laughs> and then I bought it in this medium jar when they were like having a sale, even more obsessed when I like pulled it out of the box and smelled it on cold um, and had such high hopes for it. Unfortunately, the strength and throw are not good. I feel like a broken record every time now with these Kringle ones. Like it's almost kind of a pleasant surprise when like they have strength and throw. Unfortunately, this one does not. We're gonna talk about it in a second, but I cannot recommend more highly the fragrance itself because it's intoxicating and sexy. Yes, actually. Look what else I have. I, I dug through my thing and I realized that I actually had one of these. This was one of the um, soy blends when they came out. They're not doing soy blends anymore, but I got it in this and I even burned it once or twice just to make sure that I was getting a good read on the performance. I thought, you know, after I burned this whole thing, I was like, let me just try a couple burns here and make sure that like the performance isn't significantly different here, in which case we will just associate it to soy, you know? No, it performed at least for the first two burns exactly the way that this other one did. So yeah, um, but I'm going to smell this one because it's a little bit less carbon residue-y. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so great. So there is, um, and I noticed like some of the new reviews of 
Christmas coal. Have, a lot of people have complained, or at least one or two people complained that it was very similar to Father Christmas. And if you are wondering that, yes, it is the same genre as the Father Christmas candle, which just came out. I think this one is superior though to the Father Christmas. Um, Father Christmas didn't perform either, at least not for me. Father Christmas was more redundant of Hallowed Ground, which is also to some extent in the same genre. Um, but I think that this one is, it's, it's different than Hallowed Ground. And I don't, I, it's not superior to Hallowed Ground. I mean, Hallowed Ground is like a, it's, it's a hoard worthy candle for me. This one would be if it performed better. <laughs> They are in the same genre, but they are separate. And if you're gonna compare it to Father Christmas, I mean, Father Christmas was inferior to Hallowed Ground, and I think it's inferior to Christmas Coal as well. Christmas Coal is fantastic, and if you have a Hallowed Ground, don't worry about this being redundant of Hallowed Ground. They are different scents, but it does have that like beautiful, like um, if you're familiar with the candle Sanctuary, <laughs> it's got that beautiful, deep, dark patchouli slash vetiver kind of vibe. And then it's got a little bit of spice. And it's the kind of spice that you would associate with like tobacco or with incense. It's a very kind of clove heavy, kind of spiciness without it necessarily being just straight up clove, if that makes sense. And actually one of the reviews was like, oh, this smelled a little bit like cola, like soda pop, you know, like root beer, like something. And it, that's, that's actually, I, I can see absolutely where you would get that impression as with Father Christmas too, because actually, Cola is like kind of those clove-like spices up against like kind of a brown sugar, um, like carbonated pop, basically, yeah? So it is kind of that vibe a little bit, but wait for the floral, and the floral is so beautiful. And for me, the rose is identifiable. It really is it's more rose identifiable than it is jasmine. So for me, this is not a white floral. This is kind of a, a deep uh, powdery red floral. Um, and Kent, it's, it's in that like old lady perfume kind of vibe. I mean, it's mature, it's heavy, but the entire fragrance for me is not like so in the basement that you can't, that you can't identify all of those different elements. And in that, there's a freshness to it and a vivacity that otherwise would make this like just very heavy and kind of stolid, yeah? The bergamot and the mandarin, you're not gonna identify it as citrus necessarily, but it's giving it that kind of like higher range, premium perfume kind of quality to it. It is a beautiful and intoxicating fragrance, and I adore it. And I think it is perfect for February, absolutely perfect. Um, I don't know if Kringle was like going to the whole like sexy time kind of vibe. Like you don't know where like, <laughs> where their heads were with this. But it is like a sexy, sexy vibe here. Cause you know, with the Christmas cold, there's like that whole like campy, oh Santa, I've been naughty, like blah, blah, blah. You know, like, is that the direction they were going in? I don't, I don't know that it was. I think they were maybe just trying to evoke something that kind of smelled deep, dark and, and spicy as in the coal, rather than the like campy, like sexual connotations of the being naughty at Christmas time. However, I do think this is a super sexy fragrance. It would be sexy if it didn't have the rose in it, but especially with the rose, it kind of like takes you to that Valentine's Day place, if you know what I mean. This is a candle that I would like to see as like silk sheets. So I know that that reserve line just came out and one of the candles I think is silk sheets with the black silk sheets, yeah? 
Um, this is exactly the way you would expect that candle to smell. Now I have not smelled that candle. However, I did notice that it has a great deal of like linen and cotton in it. You know, it's like kind of laundry-ish. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, like that's a vibe, I guess. I don't know that I associate like laundry with like sexy time though. You know what I mean? And I know like sexuality is complex. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm not judging. But I don't know that like that puts me in a sexy headspace. The whole like laundry day thing. Um, this puts me in a sexy headspace. You know what I mean? With the rose, with the patchouli, with the spices, with the perfume. I mean, it is just, it's perfect for like February, for Valentine's Day, for Valentine's Day night. This would be an amazing bedroom scent. You know where I'm going with this? <laughs> it's fantastic. And, and I've said this before, I do think often that Kringle uses a very specific Christmas marketing to lock a fragrance in and if the fragrance is actually not all that Christmassy, it does the fragrance a disservice, yeah? Calling something away in a manger that could actually be burned very nicely in July, for instance, yeah? Calling it Christmas coal does it a disservice because I don't think that most people are gonna smell this fragrance and think Christmas. There's really nothing Christmassy about it. It would be nice in the fall range, but especially with that floral and especially with that like mature perfume floral of rose, this fits beautifully in a cold weather romantic kind of setting, which is February, which is Valentine's Day, yeah? So this is my public service announcement, which is that if you have Christmas coal in your closet, in your cabinet, Bring out Christmas coal because this is the month to burn it in, well, going into February. And I don't think you would be quite as happy with it at any other point in the year, Christmas included. It is just made for Valentine's Day and I, I really like that red in there too. It's just, it's a stunning, deep, dark fragrance with, with, with a light enough touch on the perfume that each element comes forward in a bright and clear way. Okay, that's the positive. The negative is that this candle had very bad strength and throw. I don't know if it was like Father Christmas levels of bad um, uh, strength and throw, but maybe, but maybe. This candle, this was the one that I moved to every place in the house. I tried everything because, I mean, you guys know, if you've been with me for a long, I have obsessed over this fragrance. I wanted this fragrance to work. I wanted it to be like the next best thing. I really did. And it hurts my heart to report that it just doesn't perform. It doesn't. Um, I would say that, I mean, because I burned it all the way down to the wick clips, obviously. I probably burned it, you know, 25, 30 times, you know? In the 25 or 30 times that I burned it, I would say that it had decent strength and throw three of those times. Three. And all three of those times, it had been burning for about three hours. Three hours. I, I was not getting anything before that like two and a half hour mark. And then at about the two and a half hour mark, I started getting strength and throw. And by strength and throw, I mean like it was up in like the 6.5 range, <laughs> okay? It wasn't blowing anyone's socks off, you know? But it was decent. It was decent and given that it's a very heavy, mature perfume like fragrance, 6.5 feels good for this candle. If it was much more than that, it might be overwhelming. So I'm at, if this candle actually performed at a 6.5 consistently every time I burnt it up, I would be happy with it. I would say that that's a very decent and perhaps even appropriate strength and throw for the fragrance profile. Um, but. I mean, and that's 6.5, like getting up to 6.5 in like a half an hour after it's burned. 
I've noticed this with many of the soy candles too, and actually I saw Mick Kittredge, he was on Facebook and he even said some person was complaining that their soy candle was giving them nothing, you know? And he got on and he actually straight up said it was because of the soy. He said, you have to burn it for like much longer because, and he said something about like the soy and the temperature and I don't know what else, but he did say it was the soy that you had to wait like two hours or something like that. You had to burn it much, much longer in order to get strength and throw. If that's the case, and he was the one who said that it was because of the soy. If that's the case, that's another detraction from soy in my book. Like when you, burn a candle. You don't want to light it up and then have to wait three hours to smell that candle in your house. Are you crazy? Are you ignorant? Are you a fool? Like, no, no. Three hours, you're pushing that point where you should really be like blowing your candle out. I've been burning several Bath and Body Works candles lately. Um, obviously one of them was the very fantastic, the perfect winter, but I've been burning a couple others that I'm gonna be reviewing, one of which was like the lavender and vanilla, the cozy cashmere, and especially with the lavender and vanilla, and I'm gonna say this, while it had a modest 6.5 kind of presence on it, what I appreciated about that candle and most of the Bath and Body Works candles across the board is that you light that Bath and Body Works candle up and it starts throwing within like 20 minutes before it has even fully pooled you are getting up into that 6.5 range so the candle goes to 6.5 very quickly and then stays there and stays constant and stays consistent for the entire time that it's burned frankly that's the way that we want most candles to perform i haven't heard anybody not want a candle to perform in that way if it's a 6.5 give me 6.5 from the moment that I light it, consistent. Many of the Kringle candles are not doing that. Mick Kittrick said it was because of the soy, and I'm tempted to believe him on that. Um, this one, on the very few occasions that it got up to 6.5, it did take about three hours for it to do that. So I'm just kind of at that place where like, I can't recommend this candle. And do you know how badly that hurts because I think the fragrance is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Like it's a standout, it really is. Yeah, for those of you who are familiar with Bath and Body Works, this is basically somewhere in between rosewood and patchouli and midnight cocktails, right in there, but actually a little bit lighter and brighter and more fresh than either of those candles, especially Midnight Cocktails is actually quite good. Um, but I do think this one bests them, at least in terms of the fragrance, although very much in those genres. But if it only throws 10% of the time that you burn it, and that only after three hours, you can't recommend a candle like that. You just can't. I mean, I really think Kringle is shooting themselves in the foot. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how much of it can be associated to the soy formula, how much of it can just be associated to an amazing fragrance that is just not executed correctly. It's just not amplifying the way that it needs to, in which case, rather than pouring it, rather than marketing it, they needed to go back to the drawing board with it. It's a beautiful fragrance, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't amplify, if it doesn't throw, then you've got to go back to the drawing board. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? Um, so here I am. What do I say about this candle? First of all, if I'm not mistaken, they are retiring this fragrance. So it's still available on the website, but I feel like when they identified all the candles that they were retiring, this was one of them. So um, there's that. However, they are still available in the medium, which I recommend over the large for a whole host of reasons, but they are available in the large and in the medium currently on the website. I'll link them both down below. Currently on sale, um, but I just keep checking in, especially if it's on its way out as a fragrance offering. They're gonna be clearancing it off at various different points, so you might be able to get it cheap. Um, 
And while I can't recommend it for its strength and throw, I can recommend it for the brilliance of the fragrance itself. And so if you loved Father Christmas, at least the fragrance, if you love Hallowed Ground, if you're a Bath and Body Works person, you like Rosewood and Patchouli and or Midnight Cocktails, if that's your vibe, if you like old fashioned like rose kind of perfumes, um, I would really highly recommend it to you for the fragrance, no question. And it is just so beautiful. I wonder, I didn't really, I didn't warm it, you know, like in one of those warmers. I wonder if it would do better warming. I mean, you're still gonna have limited. I, I can't imagine you're gonna, all of a sudden, that's gonna be the silver bullet and you're gonna get like an eight in your house. But I wonder if warming it might do better. Um, and just think of it as a bedroom scent. You know what I mean? You got a warmer in your bedroom. I have a warmer in mine, you know? Like maybe you can get enough out of it to really appreciate and enjoy it. Um, and so that is my, that's as close as I'm gonna come to a recommendation. Although, like I said, the fragrance is gorgeous. It's in my wheelhouse, even though I'm not like really a huge rose person. And I can't even say I'm like a perfume or um, cologne person, but man, I love those deep, dark, like herbal, you know, musky kind of fragrances. Um, and this one is just, it's just beautiful. Spicy, yeah. I mean, this is, this is, a, this is a sexy, sexy Valentine's Day time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and it's coming right up. So think about it, think about it. How much strength and throw do you really need for a sexy candle, right? <laughs> You just need it to be in a specific special place. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I've got for you. Um, Kringle Christmas Coal. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one away um, because I love it. And I just wanna like, even though I know it doesn't perform all that well, um, I will bring it out at limited times and just kind of lift the lid and smell it every now and then because I like it. <laughs> and it brings me joy just smelling it and appreciating that fragrance. So if you're that kind of person, um, you can definitely do that with this candle. Um, it's just unfortunate that it doesn't have the same kind of presence when burned. Okay, that's what I've got for you. Happy Valentine's Day <laughs> in advance. And you know you need to be getting those candles right now because by the time that they get to you, you know what I mean? Yeah, all right. That's what I've got for you. Have an amazing day, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next one.